pleasure to be uh, here today. I'm going to be talking about a study that um, we did through the AIDS Clinical Trials Group, uh, where we're looking at a novel way to assess the HIV reservoir. So why do we need a new way to assess the HIV reservoir? Um, this is um, really the focus of a lot of the cure-related studies. Uh, how do we reduce the HIV reservoir? And one thing that's become clear over the last few years is that our current methods for measuring the reservoir have limitations. Uh, so HIV DNA is a very common way to measure the reservoir, but there's good data now that the bulk of HIV DNA is defective. That is, it's not virus, um, it's not DNA that can lead to a viral rebound when someone stops antiretroviral therapy, and therefore um, it's not a, a good measure. Um, it's an overestimate of the HIV reservoir. And so people have been looking for uh, better measures. And what we focused on in this study is a new measure called the intact um, proviral DNA assay. What that is, is it's a way to look at amongst all that HIV DNA, how much of it is intact, at least has the potential uh, to lead to replication competent virus and lead, at least has the potential to lead to viral rebound uh, when someone stops antiretroviral therapy. And why that's important is because that's the type of virus that you want to decrease with your cure related intervention. So the focus of this study through the AIDS Clinical Trials Group again was to look at intact proviral DNA. Now this uh, test or this assay that was developed by um, the Silicono lab at Johns Hopkins has been um, studied before, but there's still a lot that's not known about it. And a couple of examples of what's not known about it are, um, does it decline over time? Does the amount of intact proviruses decline over time or does it remain steady? The other thing that's not known about it is, um, does it correlate with other measures of the HIV reservoir, um, things like HIV total DNA? And the third thing that's not known about it is, um, does it correlate with markers of inflammation or activation? That's, that's something that's been um, uh, discussed, but we just don't know much about it. So what we did in the studies, we took about a little over 40 people uh, who had been on antiretroviral therapy for many, many years. Um, and we looked at two different time points. Both time points were on antiretroviral therapy. The first time point was about seven years after people started, and the next time point was about four years later. At the first time point, what we looked at is how much intact proviral DNA there is, and we looked at does it correlate with some of these other measures. And what we found, and this is interesting, is that the amount of intact proviral DNA correlated with the amount of total HIV DNA. It also correlated with the amount of cell-associated RNA, and also the amount, and this is particularly um, um, notable, with the amount of residual viremia in people on antiretroviral therapy. Now that's of interest because that means that there's a relationship between this intact virus and then these other markers of HIV persistence. We then went on to look at does intact proviral DNA levels correlate with inflammation and with uh, T cell activation? And there, interestingly, we did not find any correlations or associations. Now there's been a debate that's gone on for years as to whether HIV persistence either drives inflammation in people on antiretroviral therapy or whether HIV persistence is a consequence of inflammation. And at least in this study, we did not see any evidence that uh, intact proviruses are in any way related to the amount of persistent inflammation or activation. But the last finding I would say is the most important finding. What we found over those two time points in people on antiretroviral therapy is that there was a slow but steady decline in intact proviral DNA. Uh, the half-life of intact proviral DNA was about seven years, so it's not quick, but there was a measurable and statistically significant decline in intact proviral DNA but there was no decline in defective proviral DNA. Now that remained flat. And so there was a selective or differential loss of intact proviruses. Why is that important? Well, and um, the one reason it's important is if we could understand the mechanisms by which um, intact proviral DNA was being lost selectively, we might be able to hasten that decline and really get to a reduction in that intact proviral DNA. That, that's one point. The second point is, Intact proviral DNA may be a more dynamic measure of the reservoir, more amenable to interventions in terms of seeing an effect and than total DNA. You might not see an effect with total DNA, but you might see it with intact proviral DNA, and that would be something to follow up in, in clinical trials. One clinical trial at CROI uh, did uh, find some evidence for that, that intact proviral DNA went down, whereas total DNA did not. Again, speaking to the more dynamic nature of intact proviral DNA. So that's, I think, going to set the stage for more tests in the future with clinical trials using this intact proviral DNA uh, assay.